Good morning. All right. So, welcome to another Saturday Live. My name is Elise. I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painted Brush and Co. Uh, we're located at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk, or you can find us online at thepaintedbrush.com.au. I'm going to dive straight in today um, because we've got a little bit to do. We've got something fun to do today. We haven't done it. Um, actually, I don't think I've ever done it live before, but we'll go into that in a minute. First, I wanna show you two new wallpapers that arrived yesterday afternoon, right as I was walking out the door, the courier arrived. So these are both on my website, they're ready to purchase. Uh, they can also be purchased in store. So I can't remember what they're named, but I think you'll be able to identify them on our website. Let me unroll it a little bit so you can get a feel for it. So these are sold by the meter. One of these is 9.95, the other is a is 10.95 i'm pretty sure and i can't remember which but this one's super pretty um it's got sparkles and it's got heaps of texture to it as well i didn't know that this was sparkly when i ordered it so i hope it still sells i think it'd be really pretty in the back of like a china cabinet um but it, it's still really, really pretty. I really love the design. I wanted a black and white design, so I'm really happy with that one, except for the sparkles, but we all need some sparkles. The other new wallpaper is this ultra pretty piece. This was actually in my list for my original order of wallpapers, and I took it out, and I've been kicking myself ever since. So, of course, when I restocked, I had to get it. So they, they're both repeat patterns. They line up seamlessly if you need them to. But super pretty. A little bit of texture to this one, but not. it's not meant to be a textured wallpaper. So these are both on my website, thepainterbrush.com.au. Um, I can't remember what they're called. You'll find them under wallpapers. Uh, please be aware that wallpapers have a $5 shipping fee. It's just due to their size um, at the special boxes and Ozpost charges a little bit more for that size. Um, so there is an extra fee with them, but it is well worth it. So today we're doing something fun. Um, I, I haven't shown, pretty sure I haven't shown texture finish on live before so i've got this lamp so it was gold ugly um really dated i got it from an auction nobody else wanted it i was the only per person to even put my hand up for it um but it has a lot of potential i love the size it is huge um for reference here's a jar of purico silk finish so it's, it is really really big um, it had this big lampshade on it. Unfortunately, it's damaged and let's be honest, it was a bit ugly as well. It had like green felt and then like gold sparkly bits. <laughs> it was a bit of a mess. Um, so that came off last night. It's going to be completely rewired this one as well. So it's, it's going to be pretty much brand new except the original base we're painting. So we're going to be painting this today and we're going to be doing it with Purico texture finish. And before we dive in, I wanted to show you this pot. Now, this has not been sealed. This is Pure Eco Harbour with texture finish. This, I have filmed this piece um, and I've started editing it. It just needed, I just needed to wax it and get the final photo so that I can finish putting the video together. So as soon as I've done that, which may be today if I'm lucky, um, as soon as I've done that, this one, the video of it will be up on my YouTube and I will link it to my website as well, to the texture finish page as well, just so you can see the process. So it's really, really fun. We're going to be doing a version of this today. So you can see, this is just a big drum pot. I'm actually considering doing these as a workshop. So if you are interested, if you're a local and you're interested, please let me know. Um, it's so much fun. Everyone's would come out differently as well, which I love. So I've just added, this was a, a FX 
applique is the very last one I had in stock from, I was stocking them over a year ago. Um, so very last one I had in stock and it's just been sitting here. So of course I used it and the texture finished. So we're going to be doing something quite similar to this today. Not as textured. I don't want this lamp to be over the top. So it's um, actually metal. It's all metals or oh, some of it's ceramic some of it's metal but it's like got different parts to it it's a very odd construction but it's super super pretty so i've painted it with a coat of um, basin blocker and then one coat of pure eco cloud my basin blocker it looks purple because it was a little bit purple it was one that i mixed a long time ago um that's just been hanging out. I took a white up to my parents when I did their dining setting, which needed to be primed. Um, and we were painting the setting black, so I added some black paint to it and um, it went a little bit purpley, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so it's been primed, it's been cleaned, scruff sanded, primed, and I've done one coat of cloud. So I did that last night. So it's had overnight to dry. It doesn't need overnight to dry, but it has had overnight. And I can just pop this one out of the road. These heavy pots are very heavy. So I like to start with a base of some sort when it comes to the texture finish. I've chosen the white because we're doing a white over the top. For the blue pot, I did a coat of harbour first and then I did the harbour um, texture finish over the top. The reason I do that is just so that you've got a nice even base to work on and then if you do miss bits it's not a massive deal so you need a couple of things for this um grab an old bowl or a container of some description this is like my do everything with bowl here it, this does like cleaning through to through to mixing products and stuff so it does a bit of everything i've got pure eco chalk finish in the color cloud which is what I've painted the base with that's chalk finish uh, texture finish does work with silk finish I've tried it myself it does work but it doesn't work well silk finish had a component to it that naturally self that self levels when it self levels it's pushing all that texture out and you lose majority of the texture you end up with very very little so while it does work it's not ideal so use chalk finish with your texture finish texture finish is a paint additive it is a very fine powder it comes in a 600 ml jar but i think it weighs 350 grams um, and the jar is filled to the top i've used quite a lot it comes with a handy little scooper my son's about to arrive for the day he's spending the day with mum so i'm gonna have to open the door in a second um handy little scooper it's like this really fine powder um it's kind of feels like um custard powder it's got that sort of texture to it um very 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 fine powder it's really nice you can do a lot with texture finish um you can use it to fill holes and dings. You can use it to um, do some raised stenciling or you can do what we're doing today. So there's a lot of different things you can do with it and you can really, really play with it as well. So in our empty bowl, and I'm gonna bring you a bit closer because you are really far away today. Let's bring you closer and I'm gonna tip you down for a second so you can see what we're doing. In our bowl, we're gonna put some chalk finish. Now, I'm gonna put texture over this whole lamp. It is going to use a little bit. That pot the other day used about half a jar, so almost 100 mil of paint, almost, maybe 50 to 100 mil of paint. So it uses a little bit more than what you think it is. Start by mixing a small amount and then keep adding to it. So you're just gonna pour some paint into your bowl. So I've poured maybe 50 ml. And then you're gonna grab your texture finish. Now, with this, if you mix it slowly and add it in slowly, 
you won't get any lumps. But I found if you just really keep mixing it, any lumps that do form, do go away. So I'm just gonna add maybe three quarters of a scoop to begin with. And then grab a spoon that you don't use for anything else. I've got a few. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna mix it up just like you would a cake until it is completely combined. A um, kitchen spatula, like the flexible ones, are really, really good for this as well. I just, surprisingly, don't have one here at the, sh at the store. So you're just gonna keep mixing it and you can see how that's now really quite thick. You can see it's a little bit lumpy. So we're just gonna keep mixing that for a minute. Make sure we're all combined. And if you do give it that little bit of extra time mixing, you will get rid of any lumps and you'll make sure that it is a nice, smooth paste. So that texture, this thickness rather, and you'll see in a minute, we are going to make it thicker. So where it's got a bit of body to it, it, oh, it would maybe hold, no, it's not quite enough to hold a stiff peak like you know when you're beating eggs. Um, so it's not quite there yet. We're gonna add maybe half a cup, half of one of these little scoopy things more. So we're just gonna do this initial mix and then we're gonna add some more to it as well. Now the powder does not change the color of your paint either. Mix that all together. So now you can see we're really, really thick. So if you make it like this sort of consistency, you can use that as a filler. Um, so instead of using like a wood putty, you can use this. I used this on those big green bedsides that had the fake distressing all through them. Um, so I used this mixture to um, to fill all those little holes and they had a few dings in that as well and it worked beautifully. So once it's fully dry, it takes overnight. Once it's fully dry, you can sand it, um, which is brilliant. So now we're like at not coming off the spoon. <laughs> so really thick, which is what we want today. I am going to mix some more though because I already know that's not enough and I prefer to have sort of enough than not enough. I'd add another half a cup and now we mix it all together. And if you do mix it too thick, you can just add more paint. There's no ratio as such. It's just playing around until you get the consistency that you're after. A little does go quite a long way though. And we're obviously doing quite a large piece here. So you really don't need a lot. got any questions let me know. I'm gonna add a little bit more because I do want it a little bit thicker. So I'm, I've also got this video as I was saying at the start. I know a few of you have just joined us. Um, I've done a video on another pot doing the same technique that we're doing today um, that I will have edited and up on my YouTube maybe today but it will probably be next week we've got a workshop today um and i've got a lot on today so i'm not sure if i'll get to it but i will definitely try all right so we're very thick it's a really nice consistency so let's just move a couple of my things here out of the road make sure i get the right lid on things you don't want to get any moisture into the texture finish because you'll ruin it. So just make sure that you're popping the lid on it as well. So we've got our pot here. You can do one of two things. You can use your brush to apply it or, there we go, or you can use a little um, like art, art spatula, which is what this is, or you can use like a kitchen spatula. I just got paint all over my head. <laughs> um, so it's really up to you, but I'm going to do a bit of 
both. This is really, really curved. Um, and doing a bit of both is just gonna make it that little bit easier to get our product onto our piece. So we're gonna start with our brush and you just pick it up, same as normal. Now you could just wipe it on all over. I'm sorry, I'm off camera. Actually, I'm just gonna move the camera this way a little bit. I need a camera person, don't I? There we go, right. Let's move you there. So I've got, there you go. So you're just gonna brush it on. And you can just leave it like, ooh, like this. You can just brush it on and leave it or you can then come in with your spatula in a second. So let's get this base bit done. It's very heavy, this one. It's such a nice lamp too. So we're just popping that product on there. So, you just... You see the texture that we've got happening? It's really, really nice. I'm just gonna go around that hole because we don't want to cover that up. And what we do, once it's sort of on there, and we're just gonna keep working our way up, as it goes on, it's, it does start to dry quite quickly, but it does need overnight to fully dry. So we're just going to start working our way up the lamp and wait for that bottom piece to start to dry. And then we're gonna come in with our spatula. And I feel like the brush leaves a lot more like little lumps as well. Good morning, LJ. So we're just wiping it on. We're using Pure Eco Chalk Finish in the color Cloud this morning for those who are just jumping on. This is great to see so many of you this morning. Our lives are normally, we get all the views after the live, not during. So it's always nice to have a few little audience happening. Makes me feel like I'm not talking to nobody. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep wiping it all on. I know it's a bit hard to see because we're going white on white, but having that base just makes a massive difference. So it doesn't matter if I miss sections because there's a nice base there. We've, I reckon we've just about mixed the right amount too, which is nice. If you don't mix the right amount, you can go back in. I did it, I think, twice for that blue pot. So um, if you don't have enough, just keep mixing more. It's not a big deal at all. So once you've got it all on there, and I'm actually really liking this texture at the moment. I do like the brush strokes. What you can do is you can come in with your spatula and you can either apply it with the spatula or with the brush, so you've got both. But all you do is you sort of just brush over it. I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera in a second so you can really see what it's done. And all this does, and you sort of just want to use the edge. Don't lie it flat because what it's going to do is it's going to like create a suction and it's going to pull it off. So you just sort of keep gently wiping it. And what this is doing is it's just smoothing it out. And obviously this has got quite a few curves to it. So it is a little bit tricky to do. And I'm not looking to smooth out like every single little bump, but I just want to smooth it out a little bit. So just like that, and I'll bring it closer in a second. And if you do have lots of peaks that, and it can feel quite sharp when it's dry, once it's dry, you can just go in with a piece of sandpaper, which is what I would do, just to knock back anything that's just a little bit too, too much. And if you wait for this to dry, or start to dry, so if you do like the whole thing like what I've just done, 
then you will have a little bit more, you'll get some more layers within it as well. Can you see how it's sort of just smoothing it out versus this side where it's still really rough? You know what? I knew that was going to happen today, didn't I? <laughs> That's all right. We're fine. We can break. Um, shall we continue? So I'm just sort of, I'm not doing every single bit. But just enough to add another element to the texture as well. I really, really like this lamp actually. If I had the room, it might even be a keeper. <laughs> I have a thing about lamps. We've got a few too many. My husband's not overly impressed, so this one will be for sale. Because <laughs> I'm like, I might end up dead if I bring this one home as well. <laughs> so and you just sort of you just keep going. And if you go in all different directions as well, you can end up with some really cool little textures as well. If you do accidentally scrape a piece off, you can just sort of put it back on as well. You've got plenty of work time with this. As I said, it does take overnight to dry. And if you come back and realize that you have missed big sections, which we always do, you can just go in, mix a little bit more and just add it over the top. And you can keep building this as well. You could be building this with multiple colors. Um, applying it like this with the brush first and then with the spatula is a great way to bring in different colors as well. So you really do, there's a lot of scope here for what you can do. And it's really just up to you to really have a go with it. And I'd love to see your projects. So if you do have a go, send them through. I'd love to see what everyone creates with it. So I just, for this piece, oops, I really just wanted to change it from being a bit dull and boring and bring it, I think, into modern age as well. It was very, very outdated, very outdated. Um, but, a big lamp like this is a really nice center point in the home, I think. So, how are we looking? Nope, I've missed a whole side. And as it dries, we're just getting a little bit more texture as well. And I don't mind that there's a few bits here that it's missed because it, again, it creates another texture. So, this time, very carefully. <laughs> so, that's where we're at. I know it's really hard to see with the white. But I'll get some good... Oh, it's got rust on the bottom. That's what's coming off of my hands. Um, it's got some really beautiful texture. So, I'll get some really nice photos of this when it's done. I'm excited. I love doing decor and I love staging decor. I love getting photos of it. This one might even need like a black backdrop actually. I think that would be really pretty. So let's come in. We've got a little bit more product here in our bowl. And just get it up here onto this top part. I think we've got just enough. If we need more, we need more. Not the end of the world. It's just started to dry on the spoon a little bit. And you can just sort of apply it straight with the spatula as well. This is curved, so it does make it, I think, a little bit harder to do. And you're also going to lose a little bit of that extra texture that the brush gives you. Oh, hang on. Just let me let the family in. You all right? Come in. So we're just... My little boy is spending the day with me today while husband goes and buys me some furniture from an auction. <laughs> Hi baby girl. So we just scrub. 
we're eating out of our bowl. I think we've got just enough. If we have to mix more in a second, I can. But I reckon we've got enough. They love the store because of Echoes. And she loves to like yell and scream in here because there's so much noise she can make and it just gets louder and louder. So. We're just wiping that last bit on. Same as what we did for the base. Can you shut that outside door please? Where are you going? Bye, thank you. Bye. The camera's all the way over here. <laughs> Bye, baby girl. You have fun. Bye. Thanks. All right, so I almost got it. I'm not, I'm trying not to. Our bowl's like empty, empty. I'm just trying to scrape what I can from the bottom of it. This is, it's still water wash up as well. So you can just wash it like you would, would your normal brushes. Bubba. We're scraping the bottle, bottle, bottom of the barrel here. There we go. I reckon. There's probably still somewhere that I've missed, but I think we do have just enough which is nice. So let's make sure I get all of that underside as well. So we want that to all be covered. Does anyone have any questions? If you do, just pop them in the comments or you're more than welcome to message me as well. If you don't want to comment, that's fine. I get it. Sometimes you just don't want to. Oh, there we go. Scrape it with your thing as well. So now we're just going to do the same as what we did to the bottom. A little bit tricky because we're very rounded up the top here. But it's just a little bit. Two. Smooth it out. I think he's just found my stash of chocolates out the back. <laughs> I can hear packets. All right, so here we go. So to seal this, once it's dry, so tomorrow, not tomorrow, because I'm not back again until Tuesday. So Tuesday for me, but you can seal it as soon as it's dry. So just make sure you leave it overnight to fully dry. To seal it, I'm just going to wax it. You can use a top coat if you prefer, but a wax over chalk paint is always really beautiful and a nice easy way to seal it as well. So I'm just gonna use a wax. Um, I've used it previously over this finish. Um, it works really, really well. Just go lightly with it. I'll use probably the liquid wax. That's what I've got open at the moment. That's what I'm really loving at the moment. Um, Pure Eco's liquid wax. So that's what we'll use, but you can use anything you like, really. It's up to you. I've just missed a bit around here. And as this dries more, let me just shuffle you in. Can you see that texture there? I can see that big blob just there. So this top section will definitely need a bit of sanding because it's quite hard to get that nice smooth finish on that we're getting everywhere else. Oops. But as it dries, if you if it's really, really starting to dry like it has there, it just sort of starts to come off. So you don't want to touch too much. But as it dries, you can get 
that little bit more texture in it as well, which can be really nice. A bit more movement. And make sure that you try and go all different directions as well. Um, it's just going to stop it from looking too uniform. You don't want this finish looking really forced and really uniform. So try and go as many different directions as you can because it really will make a difference to the overall finish. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for us today. I'm gonna sit this aside, it's gonna sit out the back, I'm gonna let it dry, and I won't be back till Tuesday, actually Tuesday morning, maybe. We might be able to do a morning live. I'll see how the kids go, because I, I do school, school and daycare drop off and pick up on Tuesday. So I'll see how I'm going for the morning. Um, but if I'm doing all right, we might even do a very quick Tuesday morning live and um, what was I saying? And wax it and finish it. So I'll see how I'm going. Either way, I think I will um, video sealing it. I'm going to video sealing the blue one that I showed you at the start. Um, I'll try and do that today, actually, and get the final photos of that so that that video is done. Um, but this is just another way to apply it. It's really, really beautiful. I am leaving it the one color duty. Uh, I really, really like the white. You can come in and do multiple colors if you want. You absolutely can. There's nothing stopping you. Another option is letting it dry and then coming in with a different color and dry brushing it. So dry brushing is a very tiny amount of paint on your brush that's dry and then just like lightly feathering it over the top. And then that color is gonna catch all that all that texture. And it's gonna, going to catch on all the um, peaks. So that's another option as well. If you don't wanna go in with a full other color on the base, but you want to just add just add a little bit, bit more detail to it. You could even say to the white, add a really pale gray, just enough to lift it a little bit and give it a bit more detail. I'm loving the white. I'm thinking a big white lampshade, um, but I'll decide that once it's dry, once I've sealed it. But this is Pure Eco Cloud, which is a gray based white. Um, it has a really beautiful color to it. So a gray shade would actually look quite nice with it as well. Apart from that, that's it for me today. We are open 10 to 1. Uh, we also have a workshop today. I have two spots left in our June workshop. Jump onto our website if you're keen. They are held here in the studio at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. Um, but that's it. If you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will pop this video up onto my YouTube as well so that you can easily catch up with it later if you want to watch it again. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day.